It's time to get personal. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most revealing and brutally honest celebrity interviews. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at interviews where celebrities revealed personal information and or showed raw emotion, even if their answers weren't always truthful. Number 10. Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley with Diane Sawyer When Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley got married in 1994, people were skeptical of the relationship. What do I love the most about him? Everything. I, he's amazing. I really admire him. I respect him. I admire him. I'm in love with him. And no, we don't sleep in separate bedrooms. Thank you very much. Presley had divorced Danny Keough 20 days before, and the public accusations of child molestation against Jackson had already been surfacing for a few months. Diane Sawyer began by asking typical relationship questions on ABC News Primetime Live in 1995, but she quickly put the couple on the defensive, asking about their decision to marry and the allegations. I just want people to know what they're dealing with before and understand that I'm not the, you know, that we are not. The jokes, the degrading comments, all that kind of stuff, it's really irritating. It's hard for an interview not to get awkward with these subjects, but Michael maintained his innocence, and Lisa Marie stood by her man. I could never harm a child or anyone. It's not in my heart. It's not who I am. And it's not what I'm in. I'm not even interested in that. Diane has been criticized for trying too hard to get a scoop, much like Martin Bashir later was for his 2003 TV documentary with Michael. When people that hear that children from other families have come and they've stayed in your house, mm -hmm. they've stayed in your bedroom. Done, well, so, very few. But, you know, some have. And they say, is that really appropriate for a man? Number 9. Tom Cruise with Matt Lauer It's no secret that Tom Cruise is a devout Scientologist, and he's not afraid to defend his beliefs. During this 2005 Today interview with Matt Lauer, the topic of antidepressants comes up and things get heated. Because clearly you've done the homework and, and you know the subject. And you should. And, 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 and you should do that also because and, just knowing people who are on Ritalin isn't enough. You should be a little bit more responsible in knowing I'm really... I'm not prescribing Ritalin, Tom. Tom is not shy about criticizing prescription medication or modern psychiatry. And Lauer took the star to task for his judgment of Brooke Shields for using medication to deal with postpartum depression. I want to see her do well. And I know that uh, psychiatry is, is a pseudoscience. Lauer tries to defend the other side of the argument, but Tom refuses to concede, boasting about his superior knowledge of the subject. It's pretty awkward to watch, but there's always something to be learned from bad interviews. And in this case, the world definitely learned more about Tom Cruise. You're glib. You don't even know what Ritalin is. If you start talking about chemical imbalance, you have to evaluate and read the research papers on how they came up with these theories, Matt. Okay? That's what I've done. Number 8. Charlie Sheen with Andrea Canning Because I was people-pleasing for too long, and when you're people-pleasing, your soul is dead. Where do you even start with this infamous 2011 interview? It's been quoted in every medium imaginable, from internet memes to psychology magazines. After Sheen's contract for Two and a Half Men was terminated, Sheen's career took a nosedive, as documented by the series of bizarre interviews he gave around that time. But this was the one to beat. Yeah, I, I, I am on a drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. Um, it, uh, it's not available because if you try it once, you will die. Speaking with ABC's Canning, he speaks frankly about serious issues like drugs and the show, but also injects them with memorable outbursts, like his comment about having tiger blood. Because I'm me, I'm different. I just have a different constitution, I have a different brain, I have a different heart, I have a different, you know, I get tiger blood, man. Sheen has since attributed these outbursts to roid rage, and he refers to his interviews as cringeable. Cringe-inducing or not, they were definitely eye-opening. Because that's how I roll. I have one speed, I have one gear. Go! Number 7. Britney Spears with Diane Sawyer This 2003 interview happened at a very vulnerable time in Britney Spears' personal life. She was only in her early 20s, and her breakup with Justin Timberlake was still very raw. It's like, talk about our what we did together and, like, really sexually, sexually yeah. and stuff, and I just felt very exploitive and very weird. I was like, why is he going on these shows and they're asking him and he's talking, you know, but I'm sure, like, you know, just like right now. Despite all this, she doesn't back down from any questions asked. She defends her choice to show skin in magazines, she denies any drug use, and she openly breaks down when talking about Timberlake. Um, yeah, it was a weird... Ew, I'm embarrassed. Can we... 
Sawyer even inquired about Britney's sex life, asking if she still believed in staying a virgin until marriage. I think in reality, if you really know in your hearts of heart that you are going to be with that person forever, and you really think that with all of your heart, and you're in four or five years into the relationship, I mean, stuff can happen. Britney was no stranger to interviews or public scrutiny by this point. But for better or worse, she answered even the toughest and most personal questions with apparent honesty. Number 6. Princess Diana with Martin Bashir It cannot be stressed enough that the public loved Diana. She truly was the people's princess. I think the biggest disease this world suffers from in this day and age is the disease of people feeling unloved. And I know that I can give love for a minute, for half an hour, for a day, for a month, but I can give and I'm very happy to do that and I want to do that. Everyone wanted to know more about her life, especially about her divorce from Charles. And in that regard, this 1995 BBC Panorama interview definitely delivered. Diana was extremely candid and opened up about her bulimia, depression, infidelity in her marriage, and what it was like living as a royal. There's no better way to dismantle a personality than to isolate it. So you were isolated? Mm-hmm. Very much so. Diana also seems very vulnerable her voice full of sadness as she says to Martin Bashir, Well, there were three of us in this marriage. 22.8 million people tuned in to watch. She spoke her truth, and the world listened. Number 5. Lance Armstrong with Oprah Winfrey Oprah does not like to be deceived. In fact, she downright hates it. She was swept up in Lance Armstrong's story just like everyone else. And when it was revealed in the early 2010s that he was using performance-enhancing drugs, she too felt duped and cheated. For 13 years, you didn't just deny it, you brazenly and defiantly denied everything you just admitted just now. So why now admit it? That's the best question. The iconic television personality made it a point to confront him personally. And she doesn't try to hide her disappointment in this interview that aired in 2013. Oprah didn't accept lies or excuses. She wanted the truth, and that's what she got. Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. In the interview, Lance admits he lived a lie, and he finally confesses to doping. It's really hard to lie to Oprah, which is why she's mastered the art of the confessional interview. My um, cocktail, so to speak, was, was, was only um, EPO, but not a lot transfusions, and testosterone, which in a weird way I almost justified because of, because of my history, obviously, with having testicular cancer and losing, mm -hmm. but surely I'm running low. Number 4. Mike Tyson and Robin Givens with Barbara Walters What started out as an interview with a husband and wife ended in shocking revelations and ultimately divorce. I think for the first time I can understand abused women because what happens is, or, or people, you know, you say, why do you stay in there? Well, number one, you love the person, and number two, you get accustomed to being treated poorly. Originally, the 1988 interview was about Tyson, but Givens joined, and she had a lot to say. Instead of talking about marital bliss, Givens gives a bleak account to Barbara Walters of their eight-month marriage, accusing Tyson of being abusive. Let me say this. I mean, there are times when Michael is manic and he's incredibly abusive. Givens doesn't hide the fact that she's unhappy and even scared of her husband. He's got a side to him that's scary. Tyson is clearly shocked and sits in silence for most of the talk. Though Givens said they were working on his issues, she filed for divorce just one week after the interview and cited irreconcilable differences. Number 3. Caitlyn Jenner with Diane Sawyer Are you a heterosexual who you're going back to the sex thing, and it, it's apples and oranges. This was the moment Caitlyn Jenner finally decided to announce to the world that she was transgender. In this emotional and groundbreaking 2015 interview, Jenner talks about what it was like being perceived as a macho male Olympian, while a feminine voice inside screamed to be heard. How isolating it was to be a celebrity, and not wanting to disappoint her fans. And that's very hard for Bruce Jenner to say. Because why? I don't want to disappoint people. In a lot of ways, this is the moment she said goodbye to who she had been and took the damn ponytail out. Jenner and Sawyer would have yet another eye-opening interview together two years later. Number 2. Monica Lewinsky with Barbara Walters She's the intern that almost brought down a presidency. 
A month after Bill Clinton was acquitted for lying about his affair with Monica Lewinsky, Lewinsky decided to tell her side of the story. People have no idea what, what this has done. What this has done, that, that behind the name Monica Lewinsky, there's a person and there is a family. 70 million people ate up the Barbara Walters interview, and Lewinsky did not disappoint. Speaking out about her relationship with Clinton, how she felt about him, and everything in between. I think he is a, um, I think he's a very sensual man who has a lot of, um, sensual feelings. It turns out that she didn't just have sexual relations with that man, she was also in love with him. Did you ever tell Bill Clinton that you were in love with him? Yes. You did. What did he say? He said that means a lot to me. The 1999 interview was also a launching point for Lewinsky's pop culture stardom and various endeavors in fashion and television, among other ventures. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. We do not have your same conceptions. Our concept of freedom of the press is not yours. And I say this very honestly. I didn't murder my wife. It may be significant to you. I didn't say you did. But it isn't I said, to me. You I said, said there's nothing more significant than the murder of your wife. First of all, let's get one thing straight. Crack is cheap. I make too much money to ever smoke crack. Let's get that straight. Yo, tell me with this I gave you 30 years of my rib. Robert. 30 years of my rib. Number one, Richard Nixon with David Frost. No. So that is obstruction of justice. No, just a moment. Period. Uh, that's your conclusion. It is. Uh, but now let's look at the facts. The Watergate scandal shook the very foundations of America, and the man at the heart of it wasn't saying too much. It wasn't until 1977, three years after he resigned as president, that Richard Nixon finally opened up in a series of interviews with David Frost. I let the American people down, and I have to carry that burden with me for the rest of my life. Here, he admitted more than he ever had before, with 45 million people watching. Frost was specifically chosen because Nixon's team thought he was a pushover, but they were sorely mistaken. Frost asked what the American people wanted to know, and by the end, he had Nixon apologizing and admitting to failing the country. I let down my friends. I let down the country. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.